Hello everyone, I am Dr. Naveen Borwal, your mentor educator at an Academy Plus. So today we are going to discuss a very important topic, Barter Syndrome. And to understand Barter Syndrome, we should know the basic physiology of thick ascending loop of Henle. So if we make a diagram of thick ascending loop of Henle, we can see that there are various pump and channels which we should know for better understanding of Barter Syndrome. Okay, for that we should know at least that the primary pump is sodium potassium pump okay the primary pump is sodium potassium pump and this is a channel called as nkcc sodium potassium two chloride channel okay then we have various romk they are present on the basolateral as well as luminal but basically they are causing secretion of potassium after reabsorption they are causing secretion and they are called as romk channel and then there are chloride channel also for that two things are necessary one is called as bartin and other is called as clckb and cl sorry cl it is c L C K A. There are two channels. Okay, so if there is mutation of these pumps or channels, there can be Barter syndrome, and they are of various type. Like for example, if there is mutation of N K C C channel, it can cause type one Barter syndrome. It is called as type one Barter syndrome. If there is mutation of R O M K channels, it is called as type two Barter syndrome. If there is mutation of CLCKB, okay, it is called as type 3 Barter syndrome and it is also called as classical Barter syndrome. It is also called as classical Barter syndrome and if there is mutation of, I mean, Barton, then it causes type 4. Type 4 Barter syndrome and this is the only Barter syndrome which is accompanied by sensorineural deafness it is accompanied by sensorineural deafness because these chloride channels are also in the internal ear cochlea so when Barton is mutated then there will be problem in the hearing also so there will be accompanied hearing loss then you might ask me that why not if there is CLCKB mutation why classical Barton syndrome or type 3 Barter syndrome is not accompanied by sensorineural deafness. Answer is that when there is mutation of CCLKB, okay, it is it is compensated by CCLKA. That is why it does not have any types of sensorineural deafness. Okay, so there are four four main types of Barter syndrome. Now, the drug which is acting on this pump or blocking this pump is you know they are loop diuretics. They are loop diuretics so loop diuretics like furosemides are behaving like barter syndrome they are behaving like i mean barter syndrome so what can the feature what can be the feature if you want to discuss let me see one by one the first thing which you can see here that there is salt wasting there can be salt wasting because of blockage of nkcc channel there will be salt wasting so that can cause polyuria also that can cause dehydration also okay so polyuria will be there and there can be also dehydration okay now as we know that if salt is wasted in the collecting duct in the principal cell of collecting duct there is excessive release of aldosterone so that sodium can be reabsorbed so for that there will be secondary hyperaldosteronism. There will be secondary hyperaldosteronism. And that aldosterone will cause, it will work on ENAC channel, and ENAC channel will help in reabsorption of sodium as well as water as well as water and you know that non-genomic action of aldosterone is to secrete potassium secrete potassium so by this you can uh, clearly understand that there will be also hypokalemia so the next feature will be hypokalemia 
and by the common sense of the basic physiology you always know that whenever there is hypokalemia okay suppose that let me make other diagram for that whenever there is hypokalemia okay there is there is what influx sorry outflux of potassium from cell so to compensate that proton will go inside so this is a pump this is a pump proton potassium pump so whenever there is hypokalemia to compensate that they will be accompanied by metabolic alkalosis so next finding will be metabolic alkalosis i hope this is clear so hypokalemia metabolic alkalosis hyponatremia salt wasting dehydration polyuria what else can you suspect what about calcium see let me first discuss how calcium is reabsorbed there are cells of tal and calcium is absorbed via parasolar i mean this parasolar way and via claudin is claudin mediated calcium absorption and it is also because of suppose that protein potassium is secreted and this potassium will create a positive lumen inside okay so there will be positivity so that calcium is also a cation so that will be it will help in the reabsorption of calcium so normally when nkcc is present and you know that from ro nk channel potassium is secreted back so these are creating a positive environment in the lumen so that will cause reabsorption of calcium so if you block nkcc what will happen this will not be happening so that will increase clearance of calcium in the urine so clearance of calcium clearance of calcium will be increased in the urine will be increase in the urine so if you are using furosemide or if there is some barter syndrome then there will be increased clearance of calcium in the urine so what can this cause of course this can cause nephrocalcinosis so everything is linked it will cause nephrocalcinosis so there can be there can be presence of renal stones also there can be presence of renal stones also and because aldosterone is increased and ras is activated there will be what there will be jg hyperplasia this is also one of the characteristic of parter syndrome okay jg hyperplasia and that will increase prostata glandings also this is also one of the most important feature of parter syndrome and that is very important in understanding of the management of parter syndrome okay after that so we have discussed there will be salt salt loss water loss polyuria hypokalemia metabolic alkalosis increased clearance of calcium and that is causing the renal stone now mainly type 1 and type 2 can be present in neonate or newborn so they are having history of what polyhydramnios so why they are having history of polyhydramnios because you know that most of the amniotic fluid is formed of fetal urine and there will be polyuria so they might be having history of polyhydramnios and in newborn there will be history of polyuria frequent nappy changes and all this will be seen even dehydration will be seen there and renal stones can also be they can also have renal stones or nephrocalcinosis but one thing should be keep in mind that in type 3 in type 3 barter syndrome what we usually called as classical barter syndrome nephrocalcinosis is very rarely found so you can say that nephrocalcinosis is absent it is absent and type 4 we have already discussed it is accompanied by senso neural hearing loss so we can just summarize this all the things together how can we summarize salt wasting there can be salt wasting there can be polyuria there can be dehydration okay hypokalemia causing metabolic alkalosis then there will be increased calcium clearance from the urine leading to formation of renal stones okay renal stones and there will be also jg hyperplasia regarding management we know that 
salt and these all wasted so we can give supplement also and but the management is indomethacin or you can say NACID it is very funny that NACID if you know you know that NACIDs are given because it will inhibit prostaglandin because it is accompanied by justa glomerular hyperplasia so these are the few features otherwise there are also other types of for example sub barter syndrome mimic like little man syndrome so that is different but this is the summary of barter syndrome what we should minimum know to solve your mcq